Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew N. Price, also known as Altered's Ego, here once again in our little creative world where we've been testing out our random number generator. And as you can probably tell, this is revision three. So let's real quickly go through some of the changes that I've made to this thing. First off, I've gone back to the system of segmenting out the uh, chickens into individual containers. I think this helps with making the device more reliable and it also keeps them from bunching up when we turn on the water. I am still using a water-based system to help push the chickens around. In fact, the chickens cannot reach the tripwire without the uh, water being turned on. And in fact, uh, more to that point, uh, the chickens require two chickens uh, because they they can't reach the tripwire on their own. They require another chicken to bump them while they're flapping to be able to reach the uh, reach the tripwire. So, without further ado, let's real quickly go through and try uh, to get a random number. Now, I've sw made it a little bit different now. Now you can press a button and you can get a single number or you can put it in a fully automatic mode uh, where it'll give you several numbers in, you know, in a row. Now, I will say that this is not really a truly random device. Uh, the chickens seem to go into different modes of their AI, uh, which seems to affect things. So a lot of times if uh, the chickens go in a mode that causes them to jump more or puts them in the corners, they tend to have an easier time hitting the uh, tripwire. And so that can affect things. And let us see. As you can see, I put an animated sequence in while it gets the number, and we get a 5. So let's try this again. See what the results are like. All right. Press it again. Um, it does sometimes take it a second to get uh, a read, but you can see like that one right there. Uh, I think in the four container jumped. Yeah. And uh, hit the tripwire, and that's what triggers the device. Now, it's pretty much the same type of design that we saw earlier. I did add these here. Uh, which basically limits the inputs. Uh, it, it's trying to keep it from jamming the device. Uh, and But other than that, it's pretty much similar, other than, obviously, I uh, you know added a little animated sequence while it, it waits for the number to be uh, read and some things like that. Uh, although right now, it's uh, there is... I'm using two timing circuits on the left and the right here to control the overall speed of the device. And let me go ahead and real quickly put it in full auto mode so you can kind of see that. Uh, because when it is in full auto mode, it does seem to get results a lot more quickly. So you'll get several in a row, which is kind of nice. So let's see. We get a six. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this device. Uh, to be honest, when I first started this project, I didn't have too much of an interest in random numbers because uh, I don't quite understand how uh, Matt Snare, who is the person that uh, was uh, working on this initially, was planning on using it. But to me, I guess it just seemed like it didn't seem all that functional. However, after playing around with this a bit, I have to say I'm kind. Of, it is kind of interesting because Minecraft itself, despite its random um, terrain generation is not all that I mean it's very predictable the mobs all move relatively predictably and things like that and with this we are adding a bit of a uh, unpredictable element to the game which is kind of neat uh, let's see beyond that I mean it's a pretty simple device I mean because we just basically have these kit chickens in here they hit a tripwire water gets turned on and off and then, you know, obviously it feeds into our uh, selection system, which is essentially a selection system for a rail network. And then that outputs to the display. So there's really not, it's not all that complex, despite looking, um, what I think would, a lot of people would say is very, very intimidating. It's really not all that complex. It's, the devil here is in the details. And that's uh, that's what we're, I guess, when it came to uh, working with this device, that's really been the issue, is getting things uh, so that they perform uh, reliably. Like, for example, 
Um, I was having issues with the chickens on the extreme corners, uh, not uh, where they would uh, hit the tripwire more, and I think it's because they were trying to orient to the wall because there was a uh, open corner right here. And so sealing that up seems to have helped a good bit as far as uh, providing more reliable uh, results. Uh, you know, and it's getting the timings right and the things like that. Uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with the device. I mean, obviously, you do get repetitive numbers sometimes because, the uh, like, there we get two sixes in a row. Because the chickens go into the appropriate mode where they're, like, right next to each other and they can just jump up like that. But then their mode changes and see, like, this one is fluttering up and down and that makes it more likely to hit the, uh, the tripwire. But that's within itself is a random event like because any of these chickens could do that and uh, i mean obviously i would prefer not to have a uh, repetitive number uh selections over and over again but it is unpredictable you don't know when that's going to happen when the uh the chickens are going to move and move into a different mode so i guess from that aspect it's not too annoying as long as it doesn't stay in that mode consistently for a prolonged period of time. Um, I have seen a pretty good, uh, you know, variety of numbers coming out of this. It doesn't seem like it's predictable. I do wish there was a bit more involvement with the user, but I think this solution works fairly well uh, for what it is. And obviously, given that it isn't an extremely red ho redstone heavy creation, despite its size, it's uh, it's pretty lag free. I mean, there's not too many moving parts, and a lot of this could be removed. Like I have these pistons here for disconnecting the display while it goes through its animated sequence. That that's just a purely aesthetic, you know, uh, design choice there, and that could be taken out. Um, these pistons here were uh, part of an earlier revision, and they don't really need to be here anymore. As you can see, I've just got them permanently turned on. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I, I like it. it. It seems to work pretty well. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but we're getting a good selection numbers. It, it is something where you're not sure what's coming every time. And so I think that's the point. I mean, it's not a true random uh, result each time just due to the fact that there is a persistence with the chickens themselves, their placement, their current mode of the current mode of the AI, but for the most part, uh, you know, I think it's as good as you can get with this type of a system. I mean, I could uh, probably do some things to make it so the chickens moved, but I think that would overcomplicate the system. In fact, that's why we have the water there. It's to ensure that they move each time um, to at least a somewhat different location. As far as speed goes, it is relatively fast for what it is, but I mean, uh, Obviously, sometimes you do have to wait for, due to the nature of how the device works, you do have to wait for the chickens to actually hit the, uh, uh, hit the tripwire. So there, there is sometimes a delay, but usually it's no more than like five or ten seconds, which I think is acceptable. So, I mean, I think this is probably as far as I'm going to take this device. Um, I can't really see a reason for going too much further with it, but I do have to say I really enjoy, kind of enjoyed working on this one. This was a uh, something that I probably wouldn't have done if it hadn't been for uh, Matt Sarah mentioning to me about this particular, uh, you know, design idea, and it, it's been a challenge. It's uh, like I said, it's still not perfect, but I, I think it's uh, it's pretty good for for what it you know what it is. Obviously, I went back to the redstone display simply because it's faster, I think, and less prone to failure. Plus, I can do animated sequences and things with that pretty easily, and it doesn't require much in the way of... Um, uh, I don't have to lag the device any, uh, or, I guess, impede the device's uh, speed of operation too much to get that in there. So... I guess hopefully you found this uh, video interesting. I, I don't believe anyone else has done this, not that I've seen anyways. Um, I think it's kind of an interesting take on this. I mean, it may not be the most ideal sequence or uh, ideal design for this, but for someone that isn't necessarily looking to get into a ton of redstone to get some sort of randomness into their redstone devices, 
I think it's kind of an interesting approach. So once again, this is Andrew and Price saying good night and good gaming. Thanks for watching. Bye.